Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to In The Studio. We're here live from the BTS Studio House with episode number seven. Make sure you visit our sponsor, 100TB. They are an infrastructure service provider. They do stuff like dedicated servers, cloud services, and uh, content delivery services. So if you're in the market for that stuff, head over and check them out. And they make this show possible. And they yeah, make this yeah. show possible. That's so awesome. big shout out to uh, to those guys. Yeah, so we, uh, we, sold, we sold out, but yeah, hey, we, you we guys get out. Dota shows, so it's a, it's a good trade. Trade off, yeah. BTS gone corporate. So it's fine, boys. It smells like exhaustion up in here this morning, this yeah. afternoon. What time is it? What day is it? Is it Sunday? We have Game of Thrones is tonight. We, it's Sunday. Oh, we have Game of Thrones tonight. Yeah, all right. Do you know what day it is? Yeah. Like we have all these blackout curtains, so I like I don't even. Yeah, know I, we don't even see daylight. My internal chronometer is like. Yeah. Is that even a word? Chronometer. Internal clock. Am I out of turbo horse? Oops. Well, a chronometer? Like a chronometer? Like you really went there instead of just saying a clock? Yeah. That's like I, actually a word, like a really, really like extrapolation from clock. I went full meta, you know. Chronometer. Chronometer. Cr chronometer. That was my, my call, guys, it's kind of homogeneous in here. Like, that's, I'm going to call it trying to say call homogenous? A, clock, a chronometer from now on. Guys, I've got this, this prime chronometer over here. <laughs> so. Welcome back from Kiev, guys. This is uh, we did a show last week. It was just <laughs> myself and Gods. It was rather yeah. impromptu. Uh, the boys here were were still. Uh, you guys weren't it. even flying back yet. You we were, were. Do dodging bullets. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, all sorts of Superman shenanigans. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about the free to play premiere. We had to dodge mm -hmm. a couple of rocket launchers. All right, so we're gonna talk a little star ladder. We've got some news points we want to tackle. Uh, the whole second part of today's show will be focused around spring cleaning. That's right, patch six point eight one. We're going to go over the patch notes in some detail, not uh, that one minute per each tick, but we're just going to tackle some of the big ones, yeah. and, and that's where Merlini's going to shine. He's going to speak up today. He's going to be loud, <laughs> boisterous, oh, yeah. and give us all he's his He's going to recycle what he's let's, let's be real. He's going to recycle his notes from his YouTube yeah, video. Yeah, a.k.a. we're just going to roll the YouTube video I've and all research. take a nap. You have I've to bring something fresh yeah. for today, yeah. buddy. Yeah. Nice dinosaur shirt, by the way, Ben. I like that. Thanks. Thanks. Adorable. <laughs> so, and then to wrap things up, we'll have uh, so we'll have PFD coming on. Peter uh, Peter Dagger from EG. You guys might have heard of him. He's going to talk to us about trees and uh, EG and Star Ladder and all sorts of other stuff. So, first up, I want to hear some anecdotes. Star Ladder Season Nine Grand Finals in Kiev at the CyberSport Arena. Yeah. How awesome was it on a scale of one to amazing? <laughs> the event was amazing. Yeah, the event was definitely amazing. Yeah. That's the spirit. The games were good. Games were good. The finals were well. I, I guess like the last few matches were not the most exciting, especially the ones DK yeah. were in because they were just crushing. Like it was, yeah. it was one of those tournaments where I don't know. Like it's great to have a really close back and forth match, like Navi Alliance TI three Grand Finals. That's probably like the ideal competitive match. But this was I vaguely reminiscent of what I've basically heard about E Home's run at ESWC two thousand ten, where yeah. it was just like a pure show of dominance. Every game DK showed up, and it didn't matter what they picked. You just after like their first few signature wins, you're just like, yeah, I'm gonna just put my hands up and see what happens. Like when they that, there was that one game where they drafted the aggressive dual lane Lycan Keeper of the Light. Ice 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 had not played a game of Lycan in like two years. He said maybe he was slightly exaggerating, but I take him at his word. The guy does he doesn't really troll when you're just talking to him in person. Morphling Wisp mid and Mushi Safe Flame Puck like. No one's laning like that right now. They just made it work. So after that game, I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to doubt DK. <laughs> yeah, forget about the predictions. I, I think you had a good seven. You're like, I was getting done with the draft, and I was about to say the words, I don't know if they know what they're doing. And then I was like, wait, this is DK. <laughs> they, they might not really know what they're doing, but they're going to at least look like they know what they're doing. They're so going to make yeah. it work. They're going to make it work, wait, right? How so. do you draft against a team like DK? Burning played nine different heroes in the grand total of nine matches that He DK was not played. the only one. The supports yeah. played eight each, I believe, yep. and the least played heroes was actually Ice Ice Ice, yep. who only played four, but like, we all know he can play everything. Right. So. I mean, how do you deal with that, though? Honestly, the only thing I think you can do that can kind of like nick them in the butt a bit is... A lot of people were banning Invoker because they because Ice Invoker is so good. What I think uh, teams might be might could do, and you're not gonna hurt like teams like normal bands do, but if you ban Centaur maybe because okay. did they ever pick Invoker when they couldn't give Mushi Centaur in the offline? I don't know. You're the stats fan. I don't think. <laughs> well, sometimes I don't think they n did. neither of them were banned out, and they didn't pick any of them. Right. That's true. So, so like if even you, in situations where they had picked them before, like yeah. identical drafts, they just were like, "Oh, we'll beat you a different way this I time." I feel like the only way yeah. you can actually like kind of game them a little bit is like draft Centaur because you can take out two birds with one stone. Because I don't think they play Ice 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 Invoker without having Mushi something he's comfortable with in the offline. Yeah. But then he'll run like Puck safe. 
So like that's the only thing I think you can do to kind of like get them in the band stage. But I don't like think it. you can get them in the band stage. I don't stage. think you can get them in the band stage either. Yeah. So it's, it's impossible though. to outdraft DK. It just comes down to raw That's skill right. and execution. It was like Alliance of TI3. You can outdraft It them. was at mm. Star Ladder. Um, 6.81 yeah. is coming. I guess we'll get to that later. Maybe that's going to shake things up. Yeah. yeah. Worth noting when DK was formed, it was, well, the new, the current roster, it was 6.78. And yep. they went on, what was it, Brian? Like an 18-game win streak? Yeah, 18 Then 6.79 dropped, and, and they... they just mm. collapsed for a while. They were really yeah. shaky. They were not the best team in China. Vici Gaming was playing much better than them. Yeah. It took IG them like really well. IG was playing better. It took them several months to find their footing. Like yeah. basically just in time for the WPC season one. This isn't nearly as big of a patch as That's 20 true. It, There's not really that many gameplay changes. Like there's no Roshan respawn change. There's yeah. no right. like experience changes. The offlane changes really neutral and, changes. Yeah. yeah, there were like a lot of big ones that were gameplay and not hero ones. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a fair point. But MVP yeah. player for the tournament, um, boys. Any was there one standout player that you could name? He was my MVP. Made the I consistently. You were, I thought you were about to ask about MVP Phoenix. Made the yeah. biggest <laughs> plays. Well, you could talk about MVP, MVP <laughs> Phoenix. They, nice people, nice but guys. March is really awesome. What was the prediction nice. that right before you guys left? Ben said they wouldn't take a game. Did they no, take a game? No, no. no. I was. I, I even thought they would. Uh -huh. Yeah, but who would they beat? <laughs> There was they, never an answer Rock, to that Rock's question. Rockskiss is probably the weakest other team in the tournament. They never actually got to play Rockskiss, did they? So Rockskiss had a... They a didn't look that bad. Right, no, Rockskiss was good. Rockskiss yeah. is very good. I'm saying they were the weakest team, and they were still really good, and they didn't even get to play who was the Yeah, some people said they were going to win, but I don't know who they would take a win against. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Teams so. did play down to their... Some of the teams played down to their level, and that's, that's where you can actually <laughs> lose. Like, sure, Empire's way better than MVP Phoenix, but the way they played against MVP Phoenix, their first game of the tournament was... Did not look like a second-place team. Yeah. How hard is it to tell, actually, like, how good MVP is versus how badly the other teams play, though? Because, like, are we not giving MVP enough credit? Or are we giving mm. them too much credit? Well, uh, like, I got put on blast on Twitter for saying I was really impressed by MVP. I was not impressed in the sense, like, okay, they're as, they're as good as Empire these top TI4 teams. champions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> TI5 competitors. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> TI5 qualifiers. TI5 hey, maybe competitors. Qualifier <laughs> invitees. Hey, that's like, a big step up. Dude, yeah, did you, did you, did you see Korean Dota when it started? Like, yeah, a little bit, yeah, you know. There was like, there was it was like 40 kills in like, like 16 minutes. I mean, I, I, feel, I don't necessarily disagree. That's just such a... It's that, not refined. It's a terrible all. thing yeah, to it's say. Fine, it's fine. They have come a long way, though. Like, if they grow like, from now until, let's say, like, next... Or the end of this year, as much as they have from yeah. when they started until now, they'll be competitive, at least yeah, with the Southeast yeah. Agency, maybe with some of the Tier 2 Chinese teams. Probably not going to beat the likes of DK Navi Alliance. Well, Navi Alliance not looking too strong right now on that note, but yeah, um, the top teams basically. And there's there's no disrespect there. It's just that I mean, Europe and China have been playing Dota for eleven years. It's true. So they're doing March quite well for how. Dota for that's about true. That long. March has been playing for a while. He was almost for those of you that didn't get to catch the interview with March. He was invited to be a part of OK Nirvana Int at TI One. Really? And turned it down. What universe what? took his place? What did he have better to do than TI One? Well, a lot of teams weren't. Sold on TI as a as a tournament, right? Um, it's like people, too good to be true, kind of a deal. Yeah, and so a lot of okay. people weren't. Com and Dota One was in a in a weird situation at that point because a lot of people had played Han, so there weren't a whole lot of Dota teams. A lot of people yeah. were forming all of a sudden. Forgot Han so, was actually booming back then. And at most teams had the they had the game for like a month, I think it was, to actually play. Some teams practiced more than others, right. but some people were like, I don't know how to play it. And March, like I think March decided to go to either like. Uh, start university early or see his girlfriend somewhere and it was just like well I can make this choice and I have no idea what okay. I'm really I guess getting in into. retrospect now it's like idiot why wouldn't you go to TI1 but at the time it's just like TI I don't know is this real like millions of dollars what's so, happening yeah universe so, okay. took his place and we see where universe is now so. wow that's amazing how uh, things look in retrospect so back to the original question though breakout players most valuable does one player in particular come to mind for any of y'all mmm I would say Resolution. Everyone mm. knew how good he was online, yeah. but he played incredibly clutch throughout the tournament on LAN. One of the youngest up-and-coming players in the Dota scene in general. Yeah. Like, you look at the Chinese scene. How old is he? 17? 17? He's 18? the same age as Arteezy. Okay. Zai Maybe still no younger. Uh, he's, still there's, like, there's some Pinoid Dota pros that are, you know, they played a decent level in the Southeast Asian scene, and they're like 14. But right. yeah. as far as like major LAN tournament against top teams, I think Resolution was the most impressive. He was playing amazing online for like the past five to six months. And, well, we knew he was good from IC, even back as far as IC Cup, but yep. he had not done it on land. He did it on land. He did it in a huge way. 
he was to me like the most impressive individual performance for an up and comer. Yeah. Okay. And he had a really good storyline too, right? He's not even an up and comer anymore. I mean, right, he's yeah. right in the he's conversation for like. <laughs> he's awful. He's arrived. I didn't mean to say that. He's a. Uh, he's arrived. He's just. Anyway, uh, uh, there's a really good storyline with Resolution too, and the IC Cup guys, the Ukrainians on Empire, which is three Ukrainians, two Russians. Uh, they actually grew up playing Dota at the Cybersport Arena that we were attending at. So oh. the Starlighter guys, the staff there, they were like, had saw them like grown up from like wee lads growing up playing Dota. That's so adorable. The fact that they were able to play like their first really big LAN and perform, like actually they had gotten, Resolution had gotten to a Starlighter Grand Finals in Season 6 with IC Cup. That's true. But it was the first like. But Starlighter then is, um, I guess we can get to this, but it's evolved a lot. It's evolved oh, yeah. a lot. Even since season six, we have the international competition now. It's a much harder competition right now than it was at Starlighter season six. So it's a much more impressive the fact that they were able to reach mm -hmm. the grand finals. So it was good to see the hometown kids, you know, make it. Yeah, that is cool. Ben, MVP player for you. What do you got? Aside from players from DK, <laughs> why? What you can yeah, pick you can, play, would, You can pick anybody you say, want. I would say. DK drafter, whoever it was, Lanham. <laughs> Lanham. <laughs> well, some people say that is Lanham. All Asians look the same. It's some of them say it's Lanham, and then a couple of other That's people true. helping out. So That's I don't true. exactly know who's actually picking heroes for yeah. them, but okay. their draft was just you couldn't predict it, and you didn't know how to play against it. Right. And all the teams just look lost. They're like, well, they're always reacting to what DK is doing as opposed to playing their own game, yeah. and they just won very easily every well, time. Lanham is okay. my MVP as well, just because he had the additional duty of. I was going to say it was either the MMY or Lanham. Mm -hmm. uh, but MM, uh, Lanham had the additional responsibility of drafting, right? Right. So uh, what they did better than any other team was, like, sure, Burning played a different hero every match, and that's very respectable, especially in a carry position. But the carry position is one that's a little more open in this patch anyway, right? It's like you're su it's actually a lot of supports that are really, like, you see, like, the same five to six supports almost every game. Right. With, like, Ancient Apparition, Dazzle, Ross Shadow Shaman Star, sometimes. Shadow Shaman, like, yeah. uh, But they played almost a different support every game for them as well. Uh, and I think their ability as supports were what made some of their awkward and strange drafts mm -hmm. work. Like okay. that that Lycan, well, who was the the yeah the Lycan Morphling Puck draft doesn't work without fantastic Wisp play from MMY and a fantastic Coddle play from uh, Lanham, in my opinion. So. Very true. I think they were the the cogs in the machine. Very true. Unfortunately, I didn't watch as much Star Ladder as I would have liked. I feel uh, I feel ignorant in terms of calling an MVP, but. PPD made some pretty big plays in that tournament. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, seeing Treant now getting first banned in some games, I attribute at least some of that to PPD's <laughs> brilliant tree play. The Chinese so. banned it out every time I get yeah. say IG. Yeah. They were like, <laughs> we're not like, dealing with that We're not messing with that, dude. That's some we're serious respect with that right hero. there. Yeah. So. They were willing to give, EG, uh, like, uh, give yeah. RTZ Ember Spirit over PPD his tree, so that's, yeah. that's respect. Yeah, I, I think it's hard not to give an MVP to somebody on DK because they had a flawless tournament run, but you know, I'll, I'll be the, uh, the black sheep here. That's and fine. PPD. He lost four in a row, though. Yeah. Well, I end. like I I did. They, they did. I mean, individual players. They, they choked as a team. That's, not as a team. As that's a player. still like the most impressive land performance by a North American team ever, besides maybe like EG at DreamHack, uh, winner. Well, what about MLG? Lost. Yeah. MLG that's, was not, like, that's not a necessarily a full North American. Team. Yeah. There's, like what's three Cloud North American still, players? Well, okay, okay. Cloud9 yeah. at that point was actually three North Americans, so it was still majority North American. So yeah, yeah. okay. Second most. Yeah. Cloud9 has got a. I, I just think of them as like a world team. I think of them as like <laughs> citizens of the world, like the UNSC, like the Spartans, right? Okay. I mean, it's just kind of a grouping. It's, of it's not the worst analogy I've ever heard. Yeah. So, all right. Before we move on from Star Ladder, how much of it? It's a pretty person. bad analogy, but whatever. <laughs> well, it's still not the worst I've ever heard. I appreciate the confidence. <laughs> I appreciate the confidence. Um, so, before we move forward, last chance. Any funny anecdotes? Last words about Star Ladder before we bury the hatchet with the season nine finals? Hmm. No, I see a lot of quiet faces. Kiev is it's a lot of fun, man. Yeah. It's just like they, they live and breathe Dota. The city's up twenty four seven. I was I was not sure what to expect just having read the news, but it was it was fun. It was fine. I'd yeah. go back. Don't lie, I'll do yeah. you don't read the news. <laughs> I did for this trip. LD's <laughs> probably the more political astute of just about anybody in the house. So. You think so? Yeah. That's not a very Hey. I watch Omar every week. I know what's it's going not on. Hard, kind it's of. not hard to beat, like I basically just said, I didn't mind a couple of times, and that's my political <laughs> experience. So. I had the escape route planned out. The EG helicopter yeah. was going to get EG us out of the helicopter. <laughs> yeah. Just in case. Charlie had our so. back. No, I, I had the EG you. helicopter. You were lucky enough to get the Alliance plane. Remember, you called dibs on that. <laughs> that's right. So I had the EG helicopter. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. So let's plow forward here, guys. DreamHack Bucharest, that wrapped up. Was it earlier today? This morning, yes. Has it been that long already? Jeez. 
So DreamHack Bucharest, our winners were Alliance. They took out Cloud9 2-0 in the finals after getting knocked uh, down to the loser's bracket by Cloud9 in the winner's finals uh, where uh, Cloud9 won 2-1. So it was pretty interesting. Alliance, they were in good form, though. It was a, a yeah. pretty convincing 2-0. But uh, thoughts of the tournament overall? It was disappointing that Navi didn't have their full roster. I think that's... Yeah, it was kind of like... Three people getting sick is really unfortunate. Don't yeah. know exactly what the circumstances are behind that. Maybe people got sick at Starlighter, but probably. And, but the thing is, they beat Fnatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did. What does that mean for they Fnatic? Two, they not only beat Fnatic, they, they two, two owed Fnatic. Fnatic. Yeah, yeah. Um, Who knocked Fnatic down into the losers bracket? Was it Alliance? Alliance. Oh, it was okay. Alliance beat them two one. Yes. Wow. So, they that's... always give Alliance a good run for their money. Fnatic yeah. at lands is always so hit or miss. They either do horribly or, or they do second place. Like it's either one or the other, right? <laughs> Like it's yeah. kind of a. It's true. It's just funny. I mean, second how, place. how does Fnatic rate right now? Like, n I would not not say not TI knowing the TI invites, invites. Would you give them an invite? I don't think so. But process no of okay, like this was not the most Honestly, serious like I mean, high profile event. But they didn't even qualify <laughs> for Star Ladder. I heard it being called the they of Europe. failed to qualify for <laughs> WPC as well. Right? They oh, were in the qualifiers analogy. for that. Am I right? Wait, I'm yeah, sorry. they didn't qualify for WPC. No. But they were in the uh, qualifiers. They were. Actually, I think so. I, I'd better double check. I can't remember. I My brain is. I, I can't remember. I actually, remember. Yeah. they didn't qualify for Star Ladder. They didn't even make it into. Yeah, they didn't no. make it in the group stages. They didn't do very well in the groups. Okay. Yeah. yeah they, they were in W. They were in WPC they West. They qualify. they fell they, short. They there didn't as well. qualify. See, the thing about Fnatic to me, in terms of like a TI invite, is the fact that they've had such a stable roster for such a long time, and they're a really yeah. serious team with a lot of LAN experience. So, like, recent results are important, but. They just, they, I mean, how could you not invite Fnatic? They've been around in the MOBA scene forever. The, the, the I don't know if there's a great alternative. That's, yeah, like that's what I was going to say. Like, well, uh, looking at our predictions, it was like, it was Rox Kiss, I think, was and the team. And they had to perform Fnatic. exceptionally well at Starlighter to get a direct invite, and they did not. But if it's Rox Kiss or Fnatic as your. So I'd still Fnatic. take Fnatic. Because Easy. Fnatic's been more con consistent. Like, this, Always. this current, like, Rox Kiss, hey guys, we're, like, actually kind of good, has only been, like, over the last two months or so. Rox Kiss six months ago was not. This, this, th it's been really since I added solo that they. I mean, that's true, up. but it's a lot easier for Valve to remember what's happened in the last three months as opposed that's to what's happened. In the that's, last that's true, seven. but they've tended to make it a point that they try to take in the like the last year's worth of, like, yeah, stuff into account, right? Especially so. if you have the same roster, like you have the same five yeah. players. They've stuck together. They've achieved from October to December. They did more than almost any team. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So. So. They still play a lot of. Do I mean, their their core team has transcended titles. They they've won. You know, I I don't know. I I still think Fnatic are. You're easy. a Han fanboy. A kind. You of, remember okay. their Heroes okay. of New Earth? I do. I do. They won like back to back to back Dream Hacks. Man, they took the Hansi and just slap people around. Nobody could. They were like I don't the. Know. I, they were I the Navi of TI is, is, Like right now, if they were to go to TI, they would just do terribly. Like ninth through sixteenth. Well, what if they? I do, mean, maybe they might. Like, I think Fnatic is Somebody's a team that might boot through sixteenth because they're a team that has like. Personalities that work relatively well together. Um, so I think that when Fnatic can kind of boot camp and sit in the same place and just like get their strats together, because yeah. what we see out of Fnatic is when they find a strat that works, it works for them really well for a very short period of time until people but figure it out. But it's about to change. It's about to be six point eight one. I'm saying they will come into TI pretty fresh. Hey, Meepo got the move speed buff, man. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. Yeah. It's Watch Fnatic. Out. It's time. On. Fnatic is a this. team that is at their best when they're taking you by surprise, right? And so I think with the time leading yeah. up to TI, they're not going to be competing in all these lands because they might not qualify for some. They might qualify for the summit because they're in the EU group. Um, so we'll see you how they do. Can't invite them, lands. hoping that they're going to do well <laughs> in three months, though. But no, you also can't they're not they're invite not, them. They're okay. going. They're going to be invited just because there's no one else to it's invite. Really, honestly, hoping is a that's a slightly. I don't, I don't know if they're going to get word. invited. Uh, say, okay. I think they'll get invited. I think they'll get invited. You want to make a bet right here on ITS? What do you want to wager? Well, our predictions two weeks ago were. Like, Navi Alliance, DK, IG, Empire, Cloud9, EG, VG. Yeah. yeah. Those were our eight. And the last three, Newbie, Titan, Rocks, Kiss, Fnatic. Maybe. Newbie's changed LGD their roster Liquid. again. Speaking of Newbie, 2-0 yeah, newbie, DK newbies. today. 2 DK with their new roster. Yeah. But they changed their roster again, yeah. so that's even worse. LGD is playing not good, so they won't get invited over Fnatic, in my opinion. So Titan, Rocks, Kiss. Titan, I would, I would I think invite Rocks, Kiss get, over Fnatic. I think Titan's going to get invited. Well, those are four teams for three spots, right? Yeah. Yes. So for that. Fnatic so it's easy that Roxkiss does. Like I definitely pick Fnatic over Roxkiss. Yeah, really? Yeah. I mean, I you can't Roxkiss definitely. Like you said, if like Fnatic got invited, you wouldn't be surprised if they got ninth through sixteenth. That's not a reason not to invite them, though. I mean, I think they would do well at T. I don't think they would do awful. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, someone's like, got to go ninth through sixteenth. Guaranteed horribly. sixteen or something. Yeah. yeah, they would perform horribly. Well, I think the thing is, if you're guaranteed well ninth through sixteenth, you might not deserve a direct invite. You might qualify. Yeah, right. The last five slots are qualifiers or wild cards. Yeah. 
Fair it's, enough. It's I true. don't know. It, well, hopefully we'll see invites come out within the next. If, if they hopefully, don't, if so. they don't get directly invited, they'll still probably be the favorite in the Europe qualifier. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. They still have a good chance. Yeah. Whether or not you think they deserve it, I would be very surprised if yes. they don't get invited. Yeah, that's. Same. I wouldn't be. Surprised. Well said, LD. Good summary to that little discussion there, Ben. You're out. You're outnumbered. <laughs> you're outnumbered. All, all, all right, everybody, calm down. It's getting too down, heated. Though. Guys, my pen has a flashlight on it. Does that does that help? Yeah. I like Fnatic. I think <laughs> they're like great the, guys. By the way, that flashlight's really shit. Where did this? <laughs> it's just. Okay. Oh god. So, all right. Moving forward, we just have a few quick things we want to mention. Um, this one, EG, they picked up Axe as a sponsor. Yeah. And um, you know, normally just oh, cool sponsorship, but this is a lifestyle sponsor. Axe, like the body spray, not Axe yeah. the hero, but that's that's big. You know, that people was like smell when, bad. You need to yeah, smell good. Yeah, people smell bad. And the story. Bulldog had yeah. some funny tweet or a quote that was like, maybe now that we're sponsored by Axe, I'll have a chance with Shiver. <laughs> What I honestly think, I'll be smelling good. What I honestly think they do is Alliance wins TI4 instead of confetti raining down, just the whole arena gets doused. <laughs> <laughs> just gets doused in Axe spray. <laughs> Hopefully it's one of the better ones because Axe has some pretty as someone who was a high school athlete yeah. and was in locker rooms where like just there was just teenage boys just covering themselves in it. When yeah. it's a lot of it, it doesn't really smell too good. So maybe they make it good and dense, but yeah, I yeah. think that would maybe do wonders for the crowd. I mean, yeah. I'm glad Axe is sponsoring esports, but I was never really into the whole aerosol body spray thing. Not, I, I like the yeah. stick deodorant. I'm not it a fan of Axe as a like brand in terms of like their, but their, their stick deodorant's okay. They're, and their I, hair products are all right. It, it, they, they make me try to feel okay. like you're looking for my approval. And, yeah. I'm just looking I, over there. I just like, don't like the generic like man smell. You know, that just like, <laughs> This is what men smell like. I don't like, like smelling like a man. Well, it's like, I don't like their interpretation of what men smell like. It I mean, smells well, like cheap. fake bullshit. It's, it's cheap. It's yeah. just cheap. I mean, Axe is a cheap brand. Is this anyway. really a Dota 2 topic? Yeah, yeah sorry. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, what's really cool this. about this, though, what's important <laughs> is, it's, like, a, guys, is it's a lifestyle sponsor. <laughs> I don't think it's even relevant at all. You don't think I it's mean, a big deal? What about, like, Red Bull? You drink Red Bull, people drink drinks, people put on deodorant. So what? what? They're the same I thing. Mean, it's just like... Wait, wait, wait. What's your point? That lifestyle sponsor is only a difference? Why is this even news? Because well, <laughs> it's an it is a new arena for like uh, types of sponsors getting involved. It's like when EG, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like when EG secured Monster at the time. That was a really big deal yeah. because like energy drinks were sort of just kind of dabbling in that. Like, yeah, what's going on with this esports thing? And then they yeah. seal the deal, and it's like, oh, well, that opens the door. And then all of a sudden, Red Bull's like, wait a second, Monster might be onto something. We got to do this. Then Nas Energy's like, MLG, we got to do something. You know. Right. It's it opens up more doors once you know it's, well, it's a old, different old spice is gonna come in now and be like hey you guys wanna I'm, I mean, I mean that's, that's not the most far fetched thing I've ever have, heard they definitely have the better commercials so yeah, yeah. old, old it, spice uh, would win would win have my vote there. it's just a new avenue right and it's also good yes. that we're able to branch out into different genres of products because you have issues when everyone is just being sponsored by ASUS mm-hmm. and Thermal Take and all these competing like companies like if if we were to be sponsored by ASUS and then we do a tournament that's sponsored by Thermal Take it's like well do we show our ASUS logos? I mean, a- Thermal Take does like exclusively like peripherals and stuff, so I don't think they do like motherboards. But like, yeah, there's always a time for overlap between sponsors. So if you have someone like Axe, like no one is being sponsored by a competing yeah. body spray. Razor does not care about body spray. So sponsors. it's it's a good it's a good one to have because no matter what, you can kind of promote it. Okay, right? here's here's the real question: How many contract incentives do they get for every time they pick X? Like if they pick X I know a hundred times, there needs to be an X X. If set. they get like an X rampage dunk like we saw today, yeah. five chops. Do you get an uh, hundred, extra hundred thousand yeah. dollars on the year? Yeah. Now I that's wonder. What, I wonder if that I came up in the negotiations. Now you guys may be interested to know there's actually a hero in this game <laughs> called <laughs> Axe that we may be able to do some. <laughs> do I have with. the deal for you. Would have loved to be a fly on the wall. I'll there, see like but. an Axe Axe set and like the Berserker's call calls yeah. female heroes from a farther <laughs> radius. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, okay. jokes aside, it is good to see more li- lifestyle sponsors. You know, it's yeah. it's not news to say, oh, Cyberpower PC sponsor another yeah. tournament. I've got, like, I've got a better sponsorship: yep. LGD and a condom company. Yep, safety first. <laughs> Kung Fu is a porridge company. So the Chinese already have it on us. They have all these awesome sponsors like yeah. porridge and hot sauce. Yeah, we don't need LGD. Is also ho- is hot sauce, right? Yes. Hot sauce. So. Yeah. See, Roland knows he's he's cheering over in the corner. So okay, Ben's not Ben's not excited about <laughs> our like, this. Is a, this is the natural growth of something. That's like, good though. It's a sign that things are growing. It's so is Starlighter having one hundred twenty thousand dollar yeah. prize pool? That, that is. That is. We're good not talking news. about that. We, we did before. It before. Well, we well, did before when I mean, it was announced. Yeah. yeah. I'm well, not, you're you're hard to impress. Ben is like the Statler and Waldorf of the show, Jeez. all by himself. Voldemort right over here, here. Just oh. Statler and Waldorf. The Let's Muppets, get to interesting stuff. The Muppets stuff. that just sit back and flame the other Muppets. Oh, the old guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. oh, the old man Muppets. The old man yeah. Muppets that just flame the other Muppets. That is Ben. You are the old man Muppet. <laughs> the Muppet. first show. Like, why are you important? <laughs> why should we listen Jesus. to what you say? 
Fire and this. shots. Damn. So one of the last things we want to make mention of is the Summit Bundle, but uh, unfortunately I put that in the notes and it's not in the store yet. Once no. patch 6.81 hits, the bundle for the Summit will come out. And hey, speaking of axe, ah, there's a new axe set. It. Yeah, it's exciting. And uh, do we have a? Can we bring up a picture of the axe set? This Are is we it. really? This is we're putting it right now. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just <laughs> okay, yeah, the picture. Sure. So, um, Self promotion. What the heck? Yeah. I'm interested in it. This you're interested in. I want to see a in. picture of the accent. This is, how, this is like, like. Have you not been paying attention to our Skype groups? That picture's been. Well, like it was supposed to be a different set, and then things changed, and then. Jesus. Yeah, it was going to be like this obese puck. Yeah. yeah, that puck did have a. By the way, we're still using the. Chin. In our custom draft, we're still using the old puck, which is like. <laughs> I got the. Ch it's got like this chubby, like, mallard face. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> Yeah. I keep, can, we, can we fix that, Brian? I keep asking Sam for it, and he keeps resending me like just the vengeful si f spirit fix one. And I keep like Puck and Storm both got on. They 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 hit Jenny Craig up or something. Yeah, Speaking of Storm, <laughs> yeah, we still have the <laughs> old, the old, old. We have the old Storm. Big boy Storm, storm up there. Old too. Yeah, we're we're old G OGs around OGs. here. So okay. L LGs, LD. Let's move on. Let's so that's promotion. Come that's 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 about it. That's all the news we've got. Uh, unless we want to talk about God's making headlines, but all right, I think we want to that nix was the, that from the that was the, from the docket. The, He's not even here, so we was, can't make fun of that him. That was just the worst news I've that was ever <laughs> been involved. With. Well, I'm sorry, LT. I tried my hardest. <laughs> I'm just so kidding. that wraps up part one. Well, we're all we're all complicit. We, yeah, we put this together. Just sat there and and let it happen. So all right. Part two coming up next, guys. We're going to be talking patch 6.81. Everybody loves a little bit of spring cleaning. Yep. And uh, we're going to talk about spring cleaning Dota style. Don't go anywhere. In the studio comes back in just a few minutes.